Dr. Locke here. This is the instructions for project 233. The handouts are available in manila folders. Make sure you take notes on GNM code before you start this project. You'll need to understand it a little bit better. You'll also need the handout, the light blue handout, taped in your engineering notebook, which will give you some GNM codes, some common GNM codes that we'll be using for this project and for future activities. For project 233A and B, you need to make sure you have access to some of the instructions on the LMS. Make sure you follow the instructions I'm giving you in this video. And I'll try to go slow, but make sure you pause the video and rewind if you need to in order to make sure you get everything. The first sheet on the activity for absolute coordinates looks like this on the right, right here. We see cross arrows. The first handout that I'm going to give you looks like this. This needs to be taped in your engineering notebook. I'm going to fill it out how I would fill out with my initials. You need to put your initials in. So follow these instructions carefully. My first initial is K. And I'm just writing, I'm doing dot to dot. And I'm going to make a good, try to make a decent K. And if it's a little curved, that's fine. More than likely, this will not be a curve right on that leg of the K. But just make your letters as carefully as possible. The J. Going to make, and I'm going to make a curve right here. Now, this is the interesting part is I'm going to need to figure out where the center of that curve is, which looks to be about right here. And if I count over one, two, three, four, five, count down one, two, three, four, five, my J will actually come right about here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, right about there. So I've got to find the kind of the center point of that curve. That is the only initial I have that has a curve because my last name starts with an L and that's pretty simple. Notice that I am starting at the vertices that they give me on the first initial and I'm following that game plan. Try to stay in between these lines right here. Don't go inside in here. And don't go outside, out here, because then you're going to get too close to the edge of the block or you're going to make your letters really small if you go inside. So make sure that you make your initials so that they're plain and clear. I'm going to start with A, the letter A right here, and I'm going to start thinking how I'm going to move my tool through the park. I'm going to start at point A, and I believe I'm going to go to point B, so I'm going to go straight up from A to B. I probably need to pull the tool out and move the C to a point D here, which is in between A and B. And I'm going to go to E. And what you have to think about for each of your initials is how would you do it the most efficiently. To be honest, it doesn't matter if you, uh, if you list one letter like D. If I come back to D a couple of times, that's fine. I just need to have each point that I'm traveling to listed at least one time. Now, when I go to E, which will be at some point where I get to the end of my letter K, I want to pull the tool out of E, and I want to go to my nearest point from there. And that looks to be right about there, F. Now, for arcs, I'm going to need an entry point, and I'm going to need an exit point there, F to G, and then up to H. The other, other thing I need to think about is there is a center point there between F and G. And what I could do is I could have labeled that H, or I'm just going to go ahead and put an I there. But I'm going to need a letter for that, or uh, there is another way to do that just by noting the radius of uh, 5 sixteenths. Since I'm ending at H for the letter J, and I am making my J kind of backwards, but that's okay. The machine doesn't care which way I go. 
I'm going to lift the tool out and I'm going to go to, oops, I used I, so I'm going to go to J. And then I'm going to move down to K and then to L. So my initials are going to require A through L, which we're going to use here in a second, in order to be able to go and draw all the way through. And you need to think through your letters because some of you, your points, you're going to have more and some of you might have less. But make sure that you label each place where you know the tool has to travel with a letter. The next sheet that you will need to use and fill out actually lists point A, and in my case, I'm going to go to point L, so I don't have to worry about M or on the right hand side. So all this stuff is extra for me. I don't have to worry about it. So if your letters are as simple as mine, you might only have to go through L. Some of you may have to go further though. I doubt you'll have to use the right hand side, but Make sure you follow each of your points, and I'm going to go from A through L. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back and forth here and reference this. So A is point three one two five, and if I look down the way a little bit here, I see my X is point three one two five, and my Y is point three one two five. So this is still, this is the x-axis right here. This would be the y-axis up here. So I'm going to do 0 0.3125, 0 0.3125. B is 1.6875 on the y-axis, but the x-axis stays the same. So take note of that because that's going to be important when we deal with incremental relative coordinates. Went the wrong way. C, the X has moved over to the right, and it's now, I believe, 0.9375, but the Y is the same. Did it again. D, is at 0.3125 for X and exactly at 1 E has the same X coordinate for E is for C so 0.9375 and 0.3125 now this section is for my letter K. I would go through and do for F, G, H, and I. That would be my letter J. And then the last three would be for L. And that would be my three initials. I'm going to stop here at K and show you how we would actually use those first coordinates, those five coordinates, to code in CNC motion. So in CNC motion, this is the next handout that you need to work with. You'll have two sheets. You'll have this sheet, which will go down probably about uh, 11, 12, 13 lines, and then there's a whole other blank sheet. I won't need both sheets because I'm only going to go from point A point E, I'm going to shrink up my line here, so I can get in a little bit more precise, yep, didn't do much, so my point A is point 3125, that's good. And then what is going on here with this code 
is, and you don't need to fill everything out in each of these columns right here, um, this first set of code right here is just getting you set up. And so I'm going to show you in the next video how we would type this in to our program CNC Motion. This is our line number. There are two G codes there. It's okay to have um, the G90 is setting up. That is for absolute coordinate. G20 is for inches. It usually does that by default, so I don't think we're going to need it. So we may just focus on G90 right now, and G20 is optional. The next line number is dealing with the tool change, where we will identify a tool. And right now, we'll just use T01, which is tool 1. In CNC motion, we'll have to make sure that tool 1 exists. If it doesn't, it will cause an error, but I'll show you that in the program. Line number 2, NO2. MO3 is the code that tells us to turn the spindle on, and S3000 is going to turn our spindle speed on at 3000 RPM. One thing that you have to be very careful with this G-code is not to put spaces between a letter and a number. If you put spaces between there, between the letter M and O3, it will give you an error, and you have to go through and find those spaces. It is okay to put a space between those two codes, like N00 and G90, it's okay to put it, but they're not necessary. It's just easier for us to read a code when we use a little bit of spacing between uh, these words. So, this is setting up the GNM code for CNC motion. We're going to start with point A, point 0.3125, and that's point 0.3125. But the line before it, the uh, 4 is telling us that we're going in the Z direction to point 1. What we're going to do is set the tool at 0, 0, 0, and then point 1 is a tenth of an inch above the part. We're going to move rapidly. G00 is a rapid movement to point A, which is at x point three one two five and y at point three one two five. The fifth line, G01, is a linear interpolation. It, that's a straight line interp interpolation where it's just going to have the tool go in a straight line in the z direction, negative sixteenth of an inch, so we're plunging this into the part. We're not moving the x-y direction, we're going down into the part. And now that we're in the part at point A, we're, we want to move straight line interpolation, and sometimes we see straight line interpol, but we're SLI, to point, you can abbreviate that PT, point B. So I have to look and find where point B is, and that is at point 0.3125 and 1.6875. You do need the X and the Y code here. If you don't have that, the y, X and Y, it will not recognize what you were talking about. My line at N07, I'm going to have to pull the tool out of the part. So I'm going to need to do Z 0 0.1. At this point, do I need to change the feed rate? The feed rate was 9 going in. We didn't change the feed rate. We know that the plunge feed rate is half of what the feed rate should be for that. So I'm going to go back to line 6, and I'm going to put F 18, because we know the feed rate going through the part should be at 18 inches per minute. And I probably would put a note to that effect there in the comments. The comment code is very important, just like in Robot C. We use comments in order to illustrate what's going on. Now, I'm running out of time for this video. It's almost 15 minutes long. So um, that should get you started in terms of writing out each of these steps. I'm going to go from point B to point C to point D. After I pull out of the part, I'm going to need to plunge back in the part, go from C to D and E. And there you have it.